On the fourth time, he got surrounded by armed state police and got kicked out. And we have that video, which we will show. All right, guys, Daniel and Alejandro here. Yeah, this pandemic going on, we are just so full of updates, news, developments, twists, turns. Uh, we thought it necessary to get back together, do a little summary of what's been going on the last couple of weeks, because we frankly can't even keep up with all of the twists that have been going on with uh, with the executive orders here in New Jersey. First things first, something that's been getting brought up in, in a lot of our uh, comment sections on some of the videos from Alejandro was over at the State House. Uh, asking questions of the governor was about the press credentials, right? This is a theme that's been coming up a lot over the last couple of weeks. So just to recap everything and go back to the beginning so everyone has a firm understanding. In all previous years, you know, before, before uh, Governor Murphy got into office, there is no set rules that are put out by the governor's office you know, for what you need to be able to go in and ask questions, right? The New Jersey Press Association is the organization that dictates what minimum requirements you need to do or what credential you need to have in order to be able to attend events where there are government representatives or the governor speaking and asking questions of them. So, you know, Alex had been going to many events with Governor Christie. Um, he had even gone to events several times with Governor Murphy. However, when Governor Murphy got into office, he added extra requirements that are outside of the jurisdiction of the New Jersey Press Association, right? Mm -hmm. So just to be clear, I want to show everybody... Well, let's actually read exactly what the New Jersey Press Association... First, I kind of be believe that they were playing some games with us about what our credentials were and what we needed and whatnot, because they would not issue us their credentials claiming we don't need them. And uh, the fact of the matter is, is that they are telling us that we did not need any type of credentials except for our company-issued credentials. And per the actual email by the New Jersey Press Association, and I quote, a New Jersey police credential is not required nor intended for use relating to covering municipal, county, or state government meetings, nor is it for access to events, sports, and entertainment. In such cases, an identification card issued by the em employing news organization may be presented. This is their own words. They even follow up by saying the individuals who are denying you access must not understand the purpose of the New Jersey pre police press credential and should not be denying you access to cover such events. Their words, right. their so, exact words. NJ2AS News, the side of the organization that you know Alex goes on behalf of to ask questions, This the minimum requirement was to have a lanyard or some kind of necklace wearing uh, where it has the identification with a photo and the word press on it, and, and you might not be able to see the details, but it has his name, the name of the organization, organization, the city that they're from, all that kind of stuff. This is what he and all of the other members of the press use, right? It just has a different organization name on it. There's no difference. So when we contacted Governor Christie, I'm sorry, Governor Murphy's office about this, uh, they said, "Well, we're denying you the police press press credentials uh, and the state house press credentials. I'm sorry because uh, you're not press, you know." And then it started with the little games. Uh, so, uh, and we have rules about this. So I said, okay, what are the rules? We put in an OPA request, and surprise, surprise. This letter constitutes the response of the Office of the Governor to the above-referenced OPA request, which states, I request a following under OPA and common law right of access. Please send me the records of the policy or policies provided by the Governor's Office governing the issue, issuing of press passes. Please send those in PDF file. This is the governor's office's response. Please be advised that no responsive records were located. To assist you, however, it is my understanding that press passes are only issued by our office to official media outlets. So at first they went on this whole thing about, oh, we have rules, we have this policy. They can't cite the law, the, the regulation, or the administrative code that actually gives them the authority to tell members of the press or defining who they consider press or not. And this is how this is how they control the narrative. They literally provide access to the people that are going to agree with them and not ask honest and objective questions so that they can create and, and, and uh, enforce like a specific narrative. Well, let's, let's back up. It's a little deeper than that, right? The entire purpose of a free press is that they're holding government accountable, right? And, exactly. And, and, and telling you, the citizens, the public, 
uh, using free speech to be able to share information and, and be a sort of thorn in the side of government, right? So the press association is who defines the minimum requirements of what you need to be able to go talk to them. The press association does not make judgment calls on who is real and who is fake, right? Anybody who has an organization or anybody who wants to ask a question should be able to and are able to in most other uh, situations in other states. However, only Governor Murphy has added this additional requirement. And when we send an official Oprah request, they admit (laughs) to us there is no system, right? So this actually just happened with President Trump not too long ago with Jim Acosta from CNN. It was the same thing. They barred him and they complained. And the White House, uh, I don't know if it's the Press Corps Association or the White House had to put out an official set of guidelines, right? Because the game has to be fair. If there's a reason why you, you know, Alex or someone else is going to be kicked out of meetings, they have to define reasons and rules why, you know, you didn't do X or you didn't do Y. You can't just not have any rules and then arbitrarily decide (laughs) with guns to kick people out of the state house. And let's be very clear. This only happened. I've been attending press conferences for over two or three years now. Um, this only happened in the, one of the most recent events because Governor Murphy could not stand your voice, the nation's voice, the nation's response to his actual own words that he does not believe you and I should have the right to be able to protect ourselves and access to firearms, that only he and his... You know, uh, police officers and government agents are allowed to have uh, firearms. And you've seen some of those videos. And that video video went viral. And a lot of other news organizations picked it up. And they got millions and millions and millions of views. You know, we see the comments. We see people reaching out to Governor Murphy's office about that. You know, and he couldn't stand the fact. So he claimed in one of the, uh, in the last last meeting that, oh, your brother's here. Uh, are, are all complaining that you're not an official member of the press. Now, that's bogus. Well, let's 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 back up. So yeah. he went three times, right? He gave he went two times where he asked that questions that week. It's just about two weeks ago, and he kind of insulted him, made fun of him a little bit, but allowed him to ask his question. And then he gave some very enlightening answers that kind of showed us uh, where their minds were at, and also contradicted each other, which we're going to touch next. On the third time, he was visibly angry, right? Yeah. He, he was frustrated, and he implied that, oh, I thought, I had heard something about you not being, you not belonging here, right? This is just him saying, you know, this is yeah. him himself saying, I thought I got someone to kick you out. How come you're still here? <laughs> That's what he's really telling you, yeah. right? Um, and, you know, he asked this question, and the governor just said, I have no comment, and moved on, right? That was the third day. Didn't even give him the time of day. Didn't even try to answer the question. On the fourth time, He got surrounded by armed state police and got kicked out. And we have that video, which we will show you. On a subsequent day, he went back again. He got kicked out again. And on that day, another reporter that happened to be in there, (laughs) because it's actually really Well, let me clarify, yeah. No, no, the governor said, the governor actually made a mistake at the subsequent event where he was not there, because he had already been kicked out, he even made a comment when he had to divulge that uh, the the, um, the firearm stores were going to be reopened because of the DHS directive. He actually said something defective. I can see my friend is not here, and uh, he's probably thinking he got a modicum of success or some, something like that. Gun sales will be open tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. I noticed the gentleman who normally asked me about this did not come today. He probably feels as though he had achieved some sort of modicum of success here. Um, what's that? It wasn't let in. That was not our intention, by the way. Um, wasn't your intention to kick him out? Give me a break. You have no rules whatsoever published for the public to see in regards to what you have to do to ask you questions at a press conference. When he does go in there, you get visibly angry at him and you insult him every time he says something. Then you kick him out saying he doesn't have the credentials you don't want to define that everybody else doesn't have either. <laughs> that he but, created. Right? So you <laughs> essentially, it's not a free press. It's you picking and choosing what friendly outlets will ask you softball questions not having any rules, and then saying, oh, yeah, making fun of him when he's not there. And I, I bet you the person, I think it was a woman, right? I be, it was a woman's voice. Yeah. I bet you that woman got a talking to for opening her because that was really embarrassing for him. Well, but basically what happened was, um, and I have it all recorded, 
I was locked outside. So they locked the whole building down and I was locked outside. They approached the building, tried getting in. And I said, they locked the doors. They're not letting me in. So the, one of the reporters actually said to me, oh, you're the guy that asked us questions about the firearms. And I said, yeah. He goes, and verbatim, it's on recording. I thought those were really good questions that I would have asked as well. Right. And then the other woman didn't say much to me, but she overheard our conversation about how I was locked out. And I'm happy she stood up. And she said, no, you uh, didn't let him in. You kicked him out. <laughs> how embarrassing. And he and Murphy just he like, had to eat it because literally right before that, he was making fun of him. Yeah. Right? He, he just thought, oh, I've been kicking the guy out every day, and he can't get in. He's probably so frustrated. And now nobody can question me. No one can correct me because we're gonna. the next thing we're going to talk about is the contradictions. And then, right. uh, But think about the context here of the, the questions the other reporters are asking. They're all asking questions about what are you going to do about voter voting, you know, the elections and voting. Oh, we should do online voting if I had it my way. Right, those civil rights are okay. Those civil rights yeah. are okay. What are you going to do about people with their driver's licenses? What you know, uh, people can't get their driver's license. Oh, we're going to do this and do that and make an online driving's a privilege. Privilege, by the way, yeah. it's not a right. So they they have no issue with other questions, but the minute you talk about the Second Amendment, he cannot stand the fact, like a typical just dictator that somebody dare question his authority on who should have guns and who should not have guns. Right. So right? now now let's this is why this is v- and, and this just reiterates why and so and so important that we exist at NJ2AS News so that we can go ask those questions because it just goes to show how not only are three levels are all three levels of New Jersey government corrupted and conspiring against the Second Amendment, but the media itself is also conspiring in the second, against the Second Amendment. And they don't ask the right questions. You have the right to know. There's another, I, I don't know if you caught it, in one of the press conferences, the guy's like, oh, I'm reading off our live uh, Twitter or Facebook feed and reading off questions. They're reading questions for other people other who people. aren't there, right? So if you pay Not attention, people, they just, actually say, yeah. I have one question from Bob, and then one from Joe, and then two from me. And exactly, he's like, sure, yeah. go ahead. So... Did he check the press passes of Bob, Joe, Mary, yeah. Jane, all these other people? Right? It, it's it's malicious. It's direct. It's intentional. Right? It's because of what he's asking about, and it's the it's him and the content. It's very particular. But I I don't want to get invo- get too caught up in the platitudes about this. I just wanted to clarify for the the supporters who were saying, "Oh, why didn't you just get one?" No, he has one. We this is the one. New Jersey Press Association guidelines. He has the emails in writing from them of what he needed, and he's been going for years. Just to make it clear, the governor knows who he is. Very well. He's not a random guy. He knows his name. He's pretending he doesn't. He knows who he is. He goes to he goes to events with the governor all the, the time. time. He yeah. knows who he is. It's not this, oh, that's just the gun guy. No, he knows who Alexander is. It's intentional, okay? And it's, on top of that, we have how many videos that I have of the governor even complimenting me, complimenting NJ2AS news by saying, that's a really good question. Yada, 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 yeah. That's a very good question. Let the attorney general ask that, uh, answer that one. Right. So that's that's a good segue. So... One more housekeeping thing from two weeks ago, and then we're going to move forward with new content that we haven't shared yet that we're very excited to put out there. Um, The one very clear thing that we laughed about, we kind of touched on in the last time we got together, is the, the direct... The direct commentary from the three characters, the governor, the attorney general, the superintendent of the state police, right? So when he confronted him the first day, the governor punted to the attorney general. The attorney general said, I'm aware of the lawsuit that we received and we're not going to comment on it, right? The lawsuit is from a plaintiff and a bunch of supporting organizations, NJ2AS, SAF, complaining that the stores were closed and that this plaintiff is being injured, right? You know, their damages for for because of this executive order. So the attorney general acknowledges that someone has complained. At least one party, at least, at has least, complained. Yeah. Then on the same day, Superintendent Callahan from the state police says something to the effect of, oh, uh, yeah, we've been getting calls and emails discussing this, right? So he, at an official press conference, acknowledges that there's multiple conversations about this. And then on the, su- on the subsequent day, when he asks the second question, the governor says that he supports the Second Amendment, a bunch of platitudes, and then he goes, I'm not aware of anyone who hasn't been able to buy a gun. Yeah. So I have no, I have not received one complaint. I have not received one. So, which which goes back, and this is exactly the point. It goes back to 
they're undermining of the Second Amendment. Why would somebody want to buy a gun? Nobody wants to buy a gun. Nobody's ever complained to me about wanting to buy a gun. While gun stores are literally sold out. While you go to every Have single... Have you been to an FFL in yeah. the last, since it opened? While There's nothing. You, There's while you nothing go, there. Almost every single police department that we visited has big signs in the front. We are over... I'm paraphrasing. We're overwhelmed. We have do not have the capability of processing these new firearm applicants. The, and, but, but the governor wants to make it out on his controlled media outlet that nobody wants to buy a gun. And if you do want to buy a gun, what's wrong with you? Call the police. Guns are bad. Or no one's bothering him. No, no one's yeah, asking no one's, about yeah. this. When his two subordinates who run the state police and the highest uh, law enforcement officer, who is the attorney general, are both saying the day before, exactly, very precisely and succinctly, that they have gotten complaints. Whether it's one or multiple, and then the governor says we haven't gotten any complaints. It's 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 laughable, right? This conversation is laughable, and that's why you know that content is really damning, and it may come in useful later on. Um, so Alex has gotten kicked out multiple times, and uh, there there has obviously been developments. If you've been keeping up with our videos, um, like we alluded to, uh, I think two Fridays ago. Uh, the Department of uh, Homeland Security put out a succession of directives, and in it, they specifically cited that firearm retailers, manufacturers, ranges, um, that these places are all considered essential, right? And this is by the federal government. So that came out on a Saturday, and that following, was it a Monday or Tuesday? He left, It was Monday. He lifted mm -hmm. it after that. So he, he lifted it, and that was actually the day that he made the joke about him yeah, saying, like, mocking. oh, he thinks he got a modicum of success. I'm like... It's not about success, dude. Exactly. It's about you know follow it, giving us our rights. It's not it's not a win or lose. We all were losing until yeah. you did that. When DMVs but, open up, are are people going to be cheering that they won? This oh, isn't about winning succeed. or losing. Yeah. This is not about winning or losing. And again, DMVs a privilege. It's not at the exactly. same level as this. Yeah. So we, you know that was the first step, and it, it's not a victory. You know why? There still is no manufacturing. There still aren't any open ranges. Not allowed to be open. And what we didn't know at the time was. The state kept Identico closed, right? And if you went on the Identico, the uh, fingerprinting, the, the, this is a third-party private company that is contracted exclusively with the state to handle all of the digital fingerprints and then uh, electronically sending them to the state police so that they can finish your, your FARS check and your background check for your FIDs and your permits to purchase. So they kept them closed. And Identico's website actually said, we are not processing you know, fingerprints for FIDs or for purchase permits for guns. It explicitly said that on the website and in the recordings, but while you waited to connect to somebody. And that's why Alex, you know, got on the phone with them and put out a recording. And of course, we got a lot of feedback on that, a yeah. lot of noise. Phones got lit up again. And what happened? Okay, we'll open them back up. You guys can get your fingerprints. Ha ha ha. And we thinking, okay, maybe this battle's done. No, it's not done. Because then we talk to even more people. We're, we're engaged with our community. And they're telling us, hey, I live in a, in a town where we don't have a municipal police department. You know, we report to a state barrack. And I'm calling them and they're telling me, yeah, the clerks that work at the barrack, they're not essential employees. So, uh, yeah, you can apply with a FAR system online, but we can't give you the permit and we can't tell you what's going on with the paperwork and no one can go sign it, no one can go get it yeah. until, you know, all services are back up and running under normal circumstances. So let me get this straight. You basically have said some people, if you live in the right town, you have Second Amendment rights. And sorry, if you live in the wrong town, you don't have Second exactly. Amendment rights. Yeah. Now it's viewpoint neutrality, discrimination type of uh, issue, right? So it's every time we get to a juncture where... It's just, we're like peeling a banana slowly. It's like, okay, we solved one problem, now another. And the government is just dragging their feet intentionally, maliciously, to make sure they can make this as painful as possible for everybody. But uh, And this is by design. This is exactly how they want to do it. They put in all of these barriers so that they can turn off the switch when they want, i.e., you can't get fingerprinted. It means you cannot buy a gun. Right. We won't issue your permit. And, and, and the... And if you remember our last video, one of our last videos, they specifically told us that the New Jersey State Police demanded and ordered that we do not process firearm applicants, specific, uh, uh, fingerprinting for firearm applicants. That was exactly what they told us. So it exposes their agenda, 
that they will, okay, so the DHS, Department of Homeland Security, said gun stores have to be open. Aha, but they didn't say that we have to get, fing- you know, we have to allow them to get fingerprinted. And this is the problem with our system because it has so many hangups, so many checkpoints along the way, duplicative checkpoints that are doing the same thing, you know, running a NICS check. How many times do I have to run a NICS check to make sure that I'm not a criminal? Once. That's the only time. But we need to run it two or three times, and they can shut this off whenever they feel like it and say that stores are open and people clap and think that things are fine, and they're not. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's been an ongoing battle. Now, where does this take us? You know, their argument is that these things aren't essential, right? Of course, that was the argument two weeks ago. Now that's the argument for why the state barracks are closed. I guarantee you most of your municipal police departments are probably telling you, oh, yes, you know, it's going to take six months or something. If that's happening, you need to come and contact us at nj2as.org slash complaints. Complaints. And, yeah. and let us know. We want to keep this, you know, we've always... We've always been vigilant on that front uh, with establishing, you know, compliance with all of these departments. But especially during this time when things uh, things are heightened, there's a lot of controversy going on, and everything's a little bit chaotic. We need even more communication from everybody. To I, I don't think it even has to do with that. I think it's just them. It's an opportunity. They're exploiting, uh, exploiting an, opportunity. an opportunity. Never let it go to waste. To, exactly yeah. to infringe on our fundamental constitutional rights. They could care less about the other issues. They just want to find any and all possible ways to say you don't have the right and the ability to buy a gun. Right. So to, to kind of wrap this all up, because uh, now that we've kind of recapped everything that's been going on the last two weeks, it's crazy. We have a lot of new content, a lot of which we haven't put out yet. We have some new content to show you, um, to show this juxtaposition of how our state government says that our Second Amendment rights are not essential. But then there's a slew of other things that are still open. Oh, yeah. And not only are they open... The state is actively adding additional people, additional hours, paying overtime to make sure that certain causes are, are, are taken care of during this time. So we're going to play some, some content from some, uh, some departments in our state government that Alex has called, and uh, you can listen for yourself. And the first one uh, is the Department of Health. All right, So we're going to play that clip. Thanks for calling the Center for Family Services. Hotline Call Center. This is Tracy speaking. How may I assist you? Hey, good morning, Tracy. Uh, Can you give me assistance on how my girlfriend can uh, find an abortion clinic? Okay. And what county are you calling from? Mercer. Okay. Mercer County. Am I calling the Department of New Jersey Health? You are not. You're calling the Family Health Line. Okay, are you guys... But I can provide you with that information. Or are you a, a, a government agency or you're a, a private? Um, this hotline is a state hotline. Okay. All right, I just wanted to make sure I was calling the right department. Yeah, so the Freehold Center is going to be your closest choice. I can give you the phone number for there. All right, and may I just ask you a couple of demographic questions? Sure. Just, uh, let's see. Um, so you're calling for your girlfriend. What is her race? Hispanic. All right. Does she consider herself white Hispanic or black Hispanic? Black Hispanic. All right. Thank you so much. Hi, you reached Planned Parenthood. My name is Selena. How can I help? Hey, good morning. Uh, I just got off the phone with the New Jersey Health Department where they forwarded me your information um, on having my girlfriend get an abortion. No problem. I can definitely assist. Yes, we would have to speak to your your girlfriend directly. Okay. But uh, I was just calling to confirm that they are still providing and it's considered essential. You guys aren't closed. Yes, correct. We are still providing services and we are considered essential. Now, we're we're worried that maybe you guys might be shut down from the uh, government shutdown. Um, Is that something we should worry about? At the moment, we haven't got any update of anything, so we are still open as an essential business. So at the moment, we have no update. Everything is on seven. Okay, wonderful. All right, thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks for having me. Take care. As you see, the government thinks that getting an abortion is absolutely essential. They have extra people you know, on staff to make sure to take care of this stuff, and they reference him to uh, another location in Freehold where... They're performing these services, and they pick up the phone, and they confirm they're essential and they're open, right? And again, we're not, I'm not getting into a political discussion about 
one way or the other about these these things. I'm just showing you that the state does pick winners and losers, right? They exactly. get to pick what things they think are relevant and important that are there is there there's no in the bill of rights none of them state you have the right to an abortion right we, we have the right to to bear arms and that's not sufficient enough for the for the state subsequent call we made which is, i think is even a little juicier was uh the new jersey uh family health hotline is mm-hmm. that what it is yeah and this was about Welfare benefits, right? Mm-hmm. And, and getting no. The family health was about the abortion. Oh, I must have misspoke. Yeah. What was the department that the welfare was about? Social services. Oh, social services. Excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me. So he called. He called the Department of Social Services. They were exceptionally nice. Yeah. And let's listen how how friendly and open they are during this time of of crisis. Okay, let's play it. Hi, this is Victoria. How can I help you? Hey, Victoria. Um, my grandma and I were really scared about our benefits ending. Uh, our, our welfare and our food stamps. Uh, what are you guys doing to make sure that our stuff is still processed and we receive everything? Okay. Um, no, we're we've been we're we're essential. We're working. Um, we yeah, we're 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 working. Okay, so you we're guys are going more hours in. Oh, you guys are being paid overtime. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you guys hired more people and they, and they. No, we didn't hire more people. Okay, so you're just being paid overtime. Yeah, we're working a lot more hours. Okay, great. I'll just, okay. We are definitely understaffed, Mm -hmm. but we are trying our best, and if it, if anything happens in the cases, we'll take a little bit longer to be completed. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, Grandma's just worried. She's uh, just been a nervous wreck of making, you know, worried about, uh, you know. Well, she should have gotten an increase. Here's a perfect example. They have no problem bringing on people, I'm sorry, uh, paying people overtime to process those social services programs. But for constitutional rights, we're finding that across the board, across the state, they're cutting, the first thing they're cutting is the firearm uh, the firearm department's budget and their staffing. So now, I mean, we've recorded, I'm not going to play hours of me calling police departments where, well, I'm sorry, that department's closed. And then it puts you on hold for 15 minutes or they transfer you to the extension and nobody picks up and it rings and rings and rings and rings. But when you're talking about these other social benefits that aren't even constitutional rights, they're hiring, they're bringing on people over time. They're making sure everything's being processed, you know, on time. They're giving increases in people's benefits and so forth. They're, they're giving more money. Yeah. They're, they're giving, giving more, more money, money due to this, right? these bills. But, and- and don't and, and if these things are happening, you're gonna these are the lines you're gonna hear. Well, you know, you're gonna hear this from the police department. Well, we have this state of emergency going on. You can't expect us to be worrying about gun permits and you know, aren't don't we have more important things to do? That's all nonsense. Yeah. Right? You know, the the most important thing is if, if you want to exercise the right to protect your life and your family, that that doesn't that's not subject to executive orders, okay? They're always arguing about, well, you know, we need abortion because uh, of of rape. Well, if you allow women to be able to buy guns so they can protect themselves and they don't get raped, maybe that won't happen. Maybe that won't happen. But we, this is where this to wrap this up. This is where we come back to you, our members, and we say, if you if you're seeing this happening in your town, reach out to us. All right, get on nj 2 asorg slash complaints and give us a full detailed bullet point list. How many times you went there? The dates you went there? Who you spoke to? What they said? What you said? Because this. They're going to use this excuse about, oh, we have a pandemic. Leave us alone. Mm-hmm. I bet you, you probably submitted it five months ago. Okay? Yeah, so exactly. We want to hear from you. And- Most importantly, record, record, record. Put your, put your phone on airplane mode. Go to the police department or put your phone in airplane mode. Call. Use the voice recorder on speaker of, on another phone and record the interaction. It's the most vital, important thing for us to document these things irrefutably. We can't tell you how many people call us up every day and give us an absolutely golden information in regard to their rights being denied. And I say, well, did you record it? No, no, I didn't. And then we try to follow up. We try to call that same office. The same person doesn't pick up. That person has... Uh, or they'll just deny they said it. They, right? the, they can't deny, deny they what's recorded. Yeah. So, so in conclusion, uh, look, Alexander is not going to the state house and recording himself getting surrounded by guns for YouTube hits. That's not why, all right? Uh, I mean, it's a waste of time to do that. He's not here for celebrity. He's not here for being viral, right? There's a very definitive purpose for why we're doing this, and it's because there's more action to announce soon, right? So to be clear, exactly, our Second Amendment lawsuit is still active. We have not pulled it. They haven't given us the ranges. 
They haven't opened the state barracks. They're not opening manufacturers. As far as we're concerned, we still don't have Second Amendment rights in many facets of it, right? And there's, like I said, there's a purpose for all of this documentation, and we'll have news on that very soon. So in the meantime, you know, reach out to us, give us your feedback, reach out on Twitter, or contact us on the website, and uh, hopefully we'll have some very exciting news in the near future.